We are at Harrods Farm Market, Sydney's uh, best fruit market in Sydney. How's the work going? It's been crazy actually. <laughs> my name's Nick, I'm working at Harrods Farm Market. My name's Nick. It's coming out to my 11th year here at Harrods Farm Willoughby. You like it? Oh, I love it. Harris Farm started in 1971 with one store out in the western suburbs. It's a big family business, not a big business, but it's a, a big family in a business, if that makes sense. There's my mum, there's my dad, there's my two brothers. I have cousins working here. The first Harris Farm placement was in May 1997. Since then, more and more Harris Farm market stores have employed Job Support clients. Job Support's a federally funded organisation that places, trains and maintains people with an intellectual disability into open employment. Probably without having a family member, it might never have happened, but we had a little niece and over a year I watched this kid not have something to do every day and she physically declined as well as mentally and I said to my wife, surely every business with 30 or 40 people in has got some stuff that one of these kids could do and so we contacted a local member who put us through to job support and explained to us the way the system worked and the way the system worked was absolutely fantastic. It's been a great success for Harris Farm Markets, it's been a great success I believe for my cousin Sarah and all the other employees at Harris Farm. Harris Farm after the initial success have expanded the number of people they've taken on and they're continually saying to us look we'd like to put someone in every store if we can. How are you? How's your weekend? Nick's been here for a number of years. He does a great job here. I'm cleaner and I, I, I love my job. He knows every customer in the store. Most of his uh, work is cleaning. He goes around, sweeps all the store. As you can see, the floor shines here. Job support brought someone into our business and trained them. It was really much more than we ever expected. It's never any trouble. So these guys are given all the training they need. Please go and fill up the fruit buckets for me. I will. Thank you. The goal when you make a placement is to set up a support structure. We spend a lot of time training the client and getting that support structure right. Then we fade off the site, but we continue to drop in and monitor how well that structure we've set up is working. For as long as the person's employed, we would always have a support person coming into the store and providing some ongoing support visits. I wish I could have all my employees <laughs> managed by job support. With job support and a bit of guidance from top management, it not only works, but it is extremely cost effective. Let's go. They get paid on their performance. If it takes them twice as long to do the same job, they get paid half as much. They're always an asset to the business. They do the small odd jobs that the workers here probably never got the time to do. When the floor is really dirty, it's very easy for customers to slip on the floor. My job is to uh, make sure that does not happen. help the customers, um, put the fruit and the vegetables in a car. Our customers love us for it. The feedback is unbelievable and our retention rate is better than with other employees. One of them has already qualified for long service leave and I think the second one's about to qualify for long service leave. Every store, every shop, they should give an opportunity to work, not to stay home and watch TV. Apart from fruit market, fruit, other fruit markets definitely shouldn't because that would lose our competitive advantage, I believe. If people with an intellectual disability don't enter open employment, they go into either shorter workshops, now called supported employment, or into activity programs. When people are in segregated environments, people with an intellectual disability, they don't tend to grow socially. My cousin Sarah, she used to be quite a shy and timid girl, and as she's interacting with all the staff and the customers, her confidence is built up. The social growth of the people who are in open employment is not very noticeable. The best example that I can talk about is a guy called Rick. I taught Rick when I was teaching in special schools and Rick couldn't speak. And we ran all sorts of Ubuid language programs and they had no effect at all. 
We placed Rick into a retail store and a year later he was speaking fluently. Now, all that had changed was that he had something that he was proud of to talk about and the people treated him just like any other co-worker. I've seen lots of people save up for their own holidays, go on holidays, move out of home, live independently. It's really life-changing stuff for our guys. A lot of people with intellectual disability want to work and it's not only better for them to work, the employer gets a valuable employee and the taxpayer wins because open employment is cheaper than either shelter workshops or activity programs. These kids are not a, on the welfare system as a burden, they're active contributors to life and we've helped that happen and that makes us feel good. It works well for the whole community, from our employees to our customers to us on a you know, profit and loss statement. All in all it's a win-win-win. It's a wonderful example of how things can work when government funded organisations like Job Support and Employer get together. What we really need is, is for this opportunity to be available for everyone in Australia who wants it. You know, the ideal we need to shoot for is that every person with an intellectual disability in this country who wants to work has the opportunity to do so. Music